All right then, gang. So now we want to make a brand new GraphQL API. And to do that, we'll be using Node.js and a library called Apollo Server. And Apollo Server is one of many different libraries that you can use to easily spin up a GraphQL server. And each library has their own kind of take on it. But the nice thing about using Apollo Server is that it automatically spins up an instance of the Apollo Explorer for us on localhost, which we can use then to test out our API. So when we use Apollo Server, it's going to create a GraphQL server for us that then allows us to easily set up resolver functions that can respond to incoming queries. It also lets us easily model our different data types like authors, blogs, reviews, etc., and decide how they're all connected on the graph by making something called a schema. So we'll talk more about that in the next lesson, but for now, let's go ahead and make a new node project and install Apollo Server. All right, so I'm on the Apollo docs right here, Apollo server, and I will leave this link down below. Just click on get started. And this is gonna show us how to make a new project with Apollo server. So the first step is to make a new directory, then CD into that. And then we initialize a new project, a new node project using NPM. We also set the type to be module and that allows us to use ES6 modules. So we can say import something from something rather than require. And it also allows us to use top level await as well. Once we've done that, we have to install a couple of dependencies, GraphQL, which is the meat and bones of GraphQL. We need to install that, but also Apollo Server. And that's the GraphQL library that we're gonna use, which makes it really easy to spin up a GraphQL server, make schemas, types, respond to queries using resolver functions and all that jazz. So it just makes working with GraphQL so, so easy. So we're gonna install both of those right here. Now, if you're using TypeScript, then you can follow these directions. We're gonna be using JavaScript and basically we're just opening up the index.js file or rather we're making one and then opening the uh, the file up and notice here we have that type set to module inside package.json as well. So once we've done that it's all set up and we can go ahead and start defining the schema the resolver functions and all that stuff. So to begin with let us go up here I'm just going to copy the installs up here so these two things so we can use them in our project. All right, so I've opened the terminal right here and navigated to this directory where I want to make the project. Then I'm going to say npm init and then hyphen y, and that's going to create our package.json file for us. I also want to say npm pkg, and then we want to set the type to be equal to module that allows us to use ES6 modules. We'll see that inside package.json in a second. Then I'm going to open up this directory in Visual Studio Code. So code, then a space, then full stop, press enter, and it's gonna open up this project for us. So inside package.json, we can see that the type is module, awesome. Okay, so now we need to install those dependencies. So open up a new terminal, and you wanna paste in the npm install that we grabbed from the Apollo docs. So it should be at Apollo forward slash server, and also GraphQL. So press enter to install those dependencies. All right, and now that's done, the next thing I'm gonna do is create an index js file and this is where we're going to set up our apollo server for graphql so the way we do this is we first of all import a couple of things so i'm going to paste these in we import apollo server from at apollo forward slash server that was the package we just installed and then also we import this thing start standalone server from at apollo forward slash server forward slash standalone so basically this apollo server is for us to set up the server and configure it and tell Apollo how to handle all of our different types of data and respond to queries and things like that. This one right here, this is just to start up the server so we can start listing for requests. So after we've imported both of those things, I remember for this to work, these import statements, we need to be saying the type is module over here. Anyway, after we've done that, we can do our server setup. So we can say const server is equal to new Apollo server, like so. So that's this thing right here. All right, like so. And then down here, I'm gonna come back to that in a minute, but down here, I'm gonna say const, and then URL, the destruction here is equal to await, and then start standalone server. So that's the other thing we imported. And then we pass in, this Apollo server we just created, and then as a second argument, an object to say right here, we want to listen to a particular port number. So we pass an object as the value here, and we say the port is 4000. 
And then down at the bottom, I'll just do a little console log, console.log. And then in here, I'll say server ready at port. And then it was 4,000. Okay, so we've got the basic setup sorted now. We're using Apollo to create a new Apollo server. And we start the server using this method down here. Now the Apollo server takes in an object as an argument. And that object expects two properties. The first is one called type defs, which is short for type definitions. And these are basically descriptions of our data types and the relationship they have with other data types. So that's what we're going to be looking at in the next lesson. But the other property is a resolvers property, which is basically a bunch of resolver functions that determine how we respond to queries for different data on the graph. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at that first property, type defs, and we're going to make up our own schema.